IUL master 700 and taking the nearest minus to 0. And uh, I'm using the Centurion FICO machine for this procedure using the gravity fed system and uh, just showing you the parameters before we begin with the surgery. So this would be parameters for chalk, quadrant removal, epineutius removal, cortex removal, polishing, visco and IA. So these are the parameters that I will be using throughout the procedure. So uh, let's begin. So we are choosing the pure CIUL, which I mentioned is the latest EGOP category of lens from Johnson & Johnson. We will be using the non-toric lens for this procedure as total K is minus 0 0.17 diopters at 99. So I am using a temporal incision and the power which is going inside is plus 24, which is calculated with the Barrett TK universal tool. Proceeding like a normal cataract surgery using surgically induced astigmatism of 0.2 diopters. And the grade of cataract which is being operated on is grade 1 to 2 with 1 to 2 PSC. The opening at the moment is 2.2, but later on, because I will be using the preloaded system of the pure CIUL. We will expand this to 2.8. Otherwise, they also have a separate cartridge by which you can insert with a 2.2 millimeter opening. So, proceeding with the capsule or excess, trying to keep it at 5.5, and the excess is being done totally under red glow because lower grade cartridge gives a beautiful red glow, so it becomes very convenient. So now the rexil is complete. So like any other routine cataract surgery, now we are doing the hydro dissection and the hydro delineation, separating the lens from the capsule. So nice and separated, few more bursts just to make sure the lens is nice and loose from the capsular bag. And now we are proceeding with the FACO multiplication. So starting I use longitudinal for the chops and then for multiplication I switch to the torsional component. And I am using the Kelvin tip here because the grade of the cataract is low, it's a soft cataract, so easily managed with the Kelvin tip. Otherwise, for harder cataracts, usually I am shifting to the balance step. So, burying into the nucleus and trying to take the first direct chop. And the chop is completed to the mid periphery, so completing this chop from the other side. Now, the lens is divided nice and perfect into two quadrants. Now, further chopping and dividing into four quadrants. So, the next chop also taken. Dialing, reaching to the other end and taking the last chop. Again, this is like any other routine MICS surgery. So, what we want to highlight in this surgery is the new lens, the e lens. Now, when we have this new pure C lens coming from j, j it is the first lens which is a purely refractive e lens available in the market. Before this, even with vividity, it is a hybrid concept. So now when we have purely refractive EDOC lenses in the armamentarium, this is the newer generation lenses, the biggest advantage that we have is reduced dysphotoptic phenomena, dysphotoptia, halo, glare, spider webs at night time. 
So last is also emulsified nice and perfectly. And as we proceed with the implantation of lens, I highlight more features around the pure steel lens. So again, we understand that whenever we shift to the EDOF platform, it can never be a 100% glare free platform. So still, when I'm counseling my patients, I pre-counsel them about my or less or reduced nighttime glares. But I never commit that it will be 100% no glare, something like a monofocal lens. Now, taking off the cortex. So, using the bi-manual technique, removing the cortex from one side, changing of the hands, moving on to removing the cortex from the other half. Now, when we ask the company about the physics of pure C eat of lens, we really don't have much clarity from the company side. But what we have been told is that it works on the phenomena of continuous change of power, which is creating this elongated eat of focus for the patient. So, we have had multiple EDOP lenses coming out from various companies. We had from Bosch & Long, which was basically a small dome shape or a donut shaped disc on the lens. We have the Vivity lens, which is working on the Bosch & Beam principle. And now we have EDOP from Pure C from Johnson & Johnson which works on continuous change of power, providing a similar ease of benefit to the patients. Now, we are proceeding with the implantation of the lens now, doing the hydro insertion technique. And like I told you, the injector which comes with the lens goes in through a 2.8, so extending the opening here. Hydro insertion works really well for me, especially in torics, it gives you better stability post-op. The lens goes in nice and smooth like a breeze. So this is like any other technic platform lenses that we are used to using. We have been implanting the iHands lenses regularly, the monofocal plus category available from Johnson & Johnson. They go in nice and smooth and then they open nice and gentle. So you have ample time in hand to manipulate and set the lens right in the bar before the haptics open and take position. So you can see here the lens is gently opening and meanwhile I just set the lens in the bar in the desired position that I want the haptics to be. And then because we've insert, inserted the lens under hydro, so the visco cleaning becomes nice and comfortable. Cleaning any strands of viscoelastic under the lens, over the lens. And you can see now the lens is nicely opened in the dark pocket. The surgery is almost complete now. and just hydrating the wounds, Hello. making sure that the lens is nice and centered in the bar. I can see that the lens is getting slightly decentered. So just go again and center it. Oh, good. Thank you. And this marks the end of the surgery. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rahul. It's a, uh, a very effortless and a beautiful surgery. Very beautifully demonstrated. Uh, are there any questions from the panelists? 
And uh, I have one question: Which patients' occupations do you, what occupations do you check before you put in this EDOF lens? Yes. So now with the EDOF lens, we still understand that there will be some component of nighttime glare and reduction in contrast. So I'm pre-counseling all my patients for that. But if somebody is into regular nighttime wearing some, something like a truck driver or regular people who are on the highway, usually I'm avoiding these lenses and shifting to the monofocal plus category. Plus the beauty of this lens is now that this is not pupil dependent. So this was the issue we used to have with the vividity that patients having smaller pupils used to have a myopic shift. Here the results are very predictable that way. And how many have you planted in planted to now? About 45 now, 45 participants. Okay. Thank you. Is Dr. Tushar Nogar 